my shop. I'm Henry Davis. This morning we're going to have a demonstration on the use of the hand scraper. I'll show you a properly sharpened hand scraper. We'll go into sharpen the hand scrapers and hopefully when we get through everybody will be able to sharpen their own hand scrapers and use them. First I want to kind of show you how a hand scraper is used. This is a piece of white oak. This hand scraper is sharpened and should make a good, good curl. A good sharpened hand scraper will get you chips instead of, of dust. I'll demonstrate a sharp hand scraper and then a dull one. The sharp one should get a curl of chip up like this. This is an uh, indication that you're sharp. The hook that we'll talk about later is sharp. And you're getting a nice curl chip. A not so sharp scraper, you'll pick up just dust. Maybe a little curl mostly just dust. Uh, that's a sign that you need to stop and sharpen your scrapers again. Uh, I know we all have a tendency to uh, just keep using them as long as I can, but I uh, do the same thing myself. But a good sharp scraper will give you a good, nice curl. This is a hand scraper that is dull, and I'll show you what you don't want to do. You can see that this is mostly dust that comes up here, which is not very good. If you get to that point, you probably need to sharpen your hand scrapers. Hand scrapers work well on hardwood. This is quite old. Got a piece of cherry. They will work equally well. We've got another piece of cherry that uh, really figured it's going to be a tabletop. It would be great for, for smoothing this off. Hand scraper is also good for smoothing up the edges. Actually a little bit easier to use on the edges than on the, on the flat surface. Seems like your the degree of sharpness is a little bit more forgiving on this edge. If you notice, it's the scraper too is easier to hold. That's not a good edge. I'm hunting for a good edge. There's a good edge. I, I can tell it's a good edge because I can feel it pick up. I'm not getting as good a chip because of the of the grain breaking away. But I'm still, I'm still cutting rather than scraping. show you to demonstrate how much we can cut off these red marks here will represent scratch marks, salt marks, planer marks and you can see it doesn't take many many strokes Another little secret that I've uh, found that if I take a piece of very fine sandpaper, like 400 grit in this case, and just fairly smooth that surface, I can see any little mill marks that are left. Of course, this surface is very slick right now. If I had another mark, it would be any problem pick up your furniture, find that edge, and 
just cut that right out. Henry, is there a preferred way uh, pushing or pulling? Uh, no. I find out it's whichever one's more comfortable. Uh, I will say that normally I will flex the scraper just a little bit because it seems easier if you're coming at the grain at an angle rather than pushing it right straight through, although pushing straight through does work. You can see that. I'm not flexing it all right there. I'm flexing a little bit right here. It, I can pull just as easy, whatever's more comfortable to you. What a angle do you hold the scraper at, Henry? Is that important? I don't know of any given angle. Once we get into sharpening and we see the uh, mechanics of the, the cutting edge, it'll be more evident of how we're going to hold it. But the main thing that I do is just push until I feel an edge grab. And when I do, then I keep pushing in that direction. So there's no given angle. Again, where your scraper cuts best and where you're more comfortable. What about uh, skew angle? Skew angle, uh, sort of like your pocket knife. You can, you can skew it if you like. Uh, when I skew it, it has a tendency to run off this way. So I really like to run it straight with the wood. Actually, I've got a little, little skew when I do that. Put that angle in there. But to skew it works good. Uh, skewing your scraper works better whenever you're on the flat side of your, of your project. Uh, I'll demonstrate that now. Basically, we always want to go with our grain. Keeps the wood more smooth. There are times that you might want to actually go across, across the grain at a skew. You can see what I'm picking up there. This has a tendency to, to flatten the wood more. Uh, basically, your, the purpose of your scraper is not to flatten your wood, uh, it's just to smooth it down. But this particular piece of wood, uh, has a little ridge right there that by skewing across or actually holding the sc scraper at a skew, I can see not cut better. But however you cut, you want your finished cuts, your last cuts to be with the grain. This direction. Well, that uh, brings up a question then. Uh, do you, uh, does a scraper cause tear out in uh, highly figured wood or, or any other wood? Theoretically, the scraper is a small planer. It cuts the wood rather than, than pull it. You can demonstrate that by feeling of the wood. The wood will have almost a burnished feel when you get through. Well, how do you know when to use a plane and when to use a scraper? I don't use a plane much because most of the work I do can come straight off the planer and then it's smooth enough to go straight to the hand scraper. If there's a piece of wood I have that is too large to put on, a, on the planer, uh, for instance, this this tabletop right here. If it had a very large mismatch or some very large curves, this would be a good candidate for a planer, a hand plane, which I would use. This particular surface here is fairly rough because it hadn't been smoothed much. So this is a good candidate for a hand scraper, even though you may have a little ridge right there. Again, you can go in 
and that has a tendency to, to smooth that up. You can see I'm going across grains here, which is a little bit more aggressive. Planer might, hand planer might dig in a little bit, unless you're very careful on a surface like this. If the surface is very, very rough, I would certainly use a start out with a hand plane, and then once I get it down fairly smooth, I would go to a hand scraper. So then there's a similar question of, of when you would choose that over a, um, a hand scraper over a um, sanding. There definitely is a place for sanding uh, using the hand scraper, but I find that it cuts your sanding uh, down a great deal. Normally, once I get the surface nice and smooth by a hand scraper, a 400 grit paper will work just fine to kind of smooth it up. Of course, I usually use a an electric sander, but in this case I won't. Actually, what it does, it really saves you a lot of sandpaper. Probably if I had gone all the way, sanding this one all the way down to 400 grit, I would have probably used about four or five sheets of sandpaper at least. Uh, so the, uh, the scraper will save you a, a lot of money and I think a lot of labor. Rest of hardwoods. This is a piece of cherry. I have a piece of white oak that it works very well on. I have a piece of maple that works great. Let's look at that. Okay, let's make a couple of bad faces on it. Clean those off. That's uh, done before I could even pick up my sandpaper. It doesn't work as well on pine. The problem with pine is, although it does work, the pine has a tendency to clog up and you have to continually clean off the, the, uh, the hook. But it can be used on pine if you, if you so desire. But most hardwood is what this is. Now I want to show you a little bit of the equipment that I use to, uh, to sharpen my hand scrapers. There's no means that you have to buy all this equipment. Most everybody has the, the equipment in their shop to sharpen scrapers. The, uh, first, let me talk about the scrapers a little bit. I will be talking about the hand scraper. The hand scraper is a flat piece of steel that uh, probably six millimeters thick. They come up to uh, eight millimeters. You can get them four millimeters thick. Uh, I found out that the, the standard six works good for everything I do. The hand scraper is not to be confused with the cabinet scraper. This is not a working cabinet scraper, and I don't have a working cabinet scraper, but basically the working cabinet scraper has a blade that is shaped slightly different and sharpened differently. There are a couple of different types of hand scrapers. Mostly, we'll be using the rectangular flat ones. There's also some for curved surfaces, uh, one for convex surfaces, and one for concave surfaces. Sharpening these are a little bit more of a challenge than the, the fat ones. Basically we can normally would buy our, uh, our scrapers, but we can make scrapers. Any good quality saw blade, you can make a scraper. This one is a little bit thicker than the other. This is a proper 35 thousandths thick, which works just as well. This scraper I made out of the saw blade, cut it to the, the uh, dimensions I want, and put an edge on it just like we'll demonstrate here. Here's one that I have cut out to make for a special project. Uh, we'll sharpen it just exactly like we sharpen the flat commercial hand scrapers. Three things that we will do in sharpening. We will file the surface. This is a Nicholson Mill Smooth file. 
I think magic about that, uh, almost any smooth file will work if you want to use it. Uh, we'll demonstrate a couple of different ways to use this file. Another thing we will need is a means of honing. I use water stones. But oil stones will work just as well with some, with some oil on it. The third thing we will use when we sharpen our hand scraper is a burnishing tool. This is a commercial burnishing tool, but you really don't need that. Any round surface will do. Uh, this shankless round screwdriver will work just as well, as would the quarter inch socket extension. We'll probably need some kind of holding fixture to hold the hand scraper as you work on it. Uh, this is one I made. There are commercially available uh, fixtures that do a variety of things. This one works for me. I had it for a long time and you can see it's pretty well used. But this is the one I'll demonstrate. Holding your hand scraper in between two pieces of wood and device work just as well. And there are commercially uh, sharpening fixtures available. Uh, this particular one has a Honing uh, look what looks like a pin there that you can use. Also, it has a stone that you can use. Never used one of these. I'm sure they're very handy. Uh, but uh, I wouldn't go out and buy one. Now I'm going to demonstrate how to sharpen your scraper. The steps of sharpening would be to level and square the surface, hone the surface to get rid of all the file marks, and then using the burnisher, turn a small hook on each side. The technique of sharpening, I've demonstrated on my pad here. What we want to do is get an edge of the scraper perfectly flat and perfectly square. The way I sharpen my scrapers is to sharpen all four of the long sides. I have known people who sharpen the, the edges. Uh, either way is fine. If, if you have really have the, the never edge sharpen, they'll sharpen just as well as the as a long edge. But basically what we want is a surface that is not only smooth and perfectly flat, but square with the edges. Once we get the that done, we will burnish the edges. And by burnishing, I mean we are going to distort those edges enough to push a little hook over. We'll do that with the burnisher and the low technique of an angle of 10 to 15 degrees. 10 or 15 degrees will give you a hook that looks about like this. That little point is your cutting edge. And you can put a cutting edge on both sides of your scraper and both edges of your scraper. If you burnish it too much, hold your burnisher at a too steep an angle, you'll end up with a hook that is too deep and it'll be very hard to use, especially if you're doing a flat surface. I'm going to show you how I sharpen a hand scraper. There are several different ways to sharpen them. Uh, one of the things that I used to do, which I don't do anymore, this fixture has a slot that you can place your file, and normally it's good to place it on an angle. And this is to get the surface smooth and flat. You can put your scraper along there and do that and do this number. Of course, the first thing we're trying to do is get rid of the old bird. Okay. I don't use that method anymore. What I do now is just put the 
scraper in this little vise I made. You can also use a couple pieces of wood or put it directly in your woodworking vise if you like. I'm going to use a technique called jaw fopping. Uh, Jim Van Cleve, a good friend of mine and mentor, showed me this method, which works great for me. Actually, I am drawing the file back and forth and getting the little chips here. You have to watch and not do too much in the middle or you'll get a belly in there. And the way to get around with that is put your file here on the top and just draw it back and forth until you feel that it's pretty flat. You can also file off the edges to square them up this, this way. But the main thing is to draw a file, paying attention to the complete surface of your scraper. So supposedly the burr is all gone and you've got a nice flat surface. The next step will be to hone these surfaces. We can use a oil stone if we like or I use water stones. But if you use an oil stone there's several different methods of holding. You can uh, put your oil stone against your workbench and to keep it flat and you can use this method. Since I use water stones, although I have several different grades, I find an 800 works just as well. And I will build up a little slurry. What was that that you just used to build up your slurry? This is a a stone that comes with the set of, oil, of water stones. Uh, I suppose you can buy them. I'm not 100 sure what this is called, but the water stone has to have some grit on it to work. This puts a little grit on the water stone. What I'll do now is try to hold the scraper as perpendicular as I can and hone it so that I'm taking all the file serrations off. Because the file has left a lot of real small marks. I will want to endeavor to get that area, that edge straight, turn the file over. Work on that surface here. Put that in a little bit. This is something you can't see. It's more of a feel as to how to do it. The main thing when you do this is to hold that scraper perpendicular. Hopefully this edge right here now looks like the first picture on our chart. Completely square and smooth. The next step we're going to go through is to burnish this edge. Burnishers come in several configurations. The one I have is a round one. They also come in a oval one and a rectangular one. And as I mentioned earlier, you can either use a shank with a screwdriver or some other hardened material. 
just for a little lubrication, I normally put just a little bit of heavy motor oil or any kind of oil along that surface right there. What I want to do is make several strokes perpendicular to the edges, which I think just starts the distortion of the surface. After I put just a little lubrication on there, I will move the burnisher at perpendicular at 90 degrees to that edge until I can sort of feel the metal distorting. At this time, I'm ready to turn the, the hook, and I like to hold the burnisher at about a 10 or 15 degrees, and you push down and push across, and that hopefully will move that little edge right over and give you a hook. You can do one side. I like to change hands and do the other side Try to stay at a, about a 15 degree angle if you can. Remember we said if we get the hook too steep, it won't work too well. I feel a pretty nice hook now. So I think this, this scraper will be ready to use. The, the proof will be if it cuts or not. Keep in mind, what I'm cutting with now is the small hook that I put on the edge of the scraper. Now I want to talk just a minute about sharpening the, the oddball size. A little bit different animal. Mainly what you need to do is almost by hand. You can hold it in a vise, but you have to continue to keep moving it and you'll just want by hand keep the file around like this just to flatten the surface the areas that's hard to get in you can use another file and just, this is a pretty hard thing to do once you get the surface as flat as you want you can hone the edges just like we did the flat one except you still have to do sort of like that which is not an easy thing. Once you get ready to burnish it you put it in the, the back in the vise and you'll actually burnish it just sort of like you would with the flat one. That's about all I can say about sharpening the, the roundness. I've been asked, where do you get scrapers? You can purchase these scrapers from almost any woodworking catalog. Uh, I noticed in Woodcraft there is a set of three, which will be these three, on sale for about $12. You can buy individual ones anywhere from six through twelve dollars, depending on the name you get and the quality. You can make your own. This is part of an old saw blade that I found somewhere that I have made several scrapers out of. Uh, this being one of them. If you have a special purpose that you need a special shape for, make your own scraper. You sharpen it just exactly like you would your regular scrapers. You get just as good an edge, and you've got the width edge that you need for a particular job. That concludes my presentation. The way I sharpen my scrapers is by no means the only way. 
There are other club members that use uh, the scrapers. They're successful. Probably sharp a little bit differently. Uh, but in almost all of our woodwork, the end results is what you're looking for. If you sharpen them like me, that'd be fine. If you if you do it with your own technique, that's even better. Please don't hesitate to ask any member of our club. What, uh, if you have questions, we will be more than happy to uh, to talk to you about it. That concludes my program, and I thank you very, very much.